Peep, peep, peep. Wir haben, haben uns alle lieb. lieb. Very good. They're the track that we have. They're very track that we have. Hot and loud. And a little bit sad. He was the best guy around. Oh my, oh my. Is it hot in here or what? You're an attractive guy. It's the fabulous Tony Cantwell. I'm talking about Shane Daniel Burns. Idiot, so Three. I know, I know you belong to Rira, but tonight you belong to Rira. 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 That wasn't that bad. That, that was, was okay. Good. Off the cuff like that. Our live gigs should just be us singing. And, you know, <laughs> people should be like aghast. And we just <laughs> so disappointed. We just keep opening new cans of Rira. <laughs> go, All right, here's our other Rira song. <laughs> this uh, is Rira, but it's uh, funk pop from the seventies. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for sponsoring the podcast, Rira. Thank you. We don't cancel doing these podcasts because they're sponsored. So thank you for the accountability of Cold Hard Cash. You're our dream. I'm annoyed that I spend too much time learning um, Espanol yeah. and not enough time learning um, what's the German in German? Deutsch. Deutsch. Shut Deutsch. Up. Shut up. Shut up. Sprachen Sie Deutsch? Should have known that. <laughs> uh, Entschuldigung, wie komme ich am besten zum Bahnhof bitte? <laughs> also Bahnhof uh, links yeah. und dann rechts und geradeaus. Die erste Straße links? Die erste Straße links, und ja. Und dann um die Ecke. Und um dann die Ecke und dann links und dann rechts und dann es gibt ein großes Mann. Ah, über die Brücke. Brücke. Über die Brücke. Ah, und dann like ist es auf der linken Seite. Ja. Ah, danke schön. Okay, welcome to Learning German with Shane and Kilian. So today we're going to be talking about uh, how, to, <laughs> how to write a note and put it on your neighbor's door when they are really making too much noise or when they're wearing their shoes in the house. Do you know that about no note culture in Germany? No. Oh, this is, I mean, I guess Berliners will know about this. It's very big in Berlin because a lot of people live in... In Berlin? Like in Berlin. Um, in Berlin? Hallo aus Berlin. 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 But they do, in Germany, they, they write passive-aggressive notes um, and they leave them on people, they stick them on someone's door when they do... So. It's very, very common. Wow. If, you do, if you're not aware of this, then you, you, you know, you get a big shock when you see it the first time. But if, let's say, you're doing something, I mean, Germans get annoyed about like the, like the littlest stuff. But like, <laughs> oh, we know. <laughs> you're, you're wearing a house shoe uh, and I'm beneath you and I'm hearing a clunk, clunk, clunk. It's like uh, the horses are going around in your house. <laughs> uh, so can you <laughs> put that house shoe. They're like, uh, yeah, house shoe. <laughs> that's what they call them, the house shoes. Wow. And, um, and so they'll, they'll write a note and they'll say, please, you know, Take your shoes off when you go in your, your own house, that kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. Or you put you're putting your bins out in the wrong place. And they'll just do a big fucking note on, on the And door. would you respond with a note? Or would you just take your skull and <sighs> like a champ? Yeah, I mean you might sort it out the Irish way, you know, fucking <laughs> knock fucking. on their door and just, you know, go, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, so sorry. Uh, I li here's a basket of fruit. Yeah. And yeah. um listen, and I I'll move out. I will I will literally <laughs> move out. Yeah. Um, Somebody puts out food for foxes, but they put it on on my house. What on the roof? So we're Gable End, as you know, Tony. As you mm -hmm. well know, we're Gable End. The gays at Gable End. The we're, gays the gays we're the gays at Gable End. That's <laughs> it. It's just Shane and Ray. The gays at Gable End, <laughs> Dublin. But you know, first of all, you're not supposed to leave out food for the foxes. Why not? I b believe it's bad. Anthony Lerner was on RT Radio One. You're not supposed to do that. Did you know one time... She you know, actually like a sheep or Derek something. Mooney, she reveals her head. Mooney goes wild on one. They recorded a segment live from my parents. Not live. They recorded a segment. Full stop. Uh, from my parents' house when we were kids. About did the they? foxes. Yeah, they did. About the urban were foxes. Were they looking at your parents' bins, pointing at them, going, this is just... Like, look at this. This is terrible. Or were they like, this is pristine? It wasn't to our bins. Okay, sorry. I fucking Where love that come foxes. Out of? Because well, you were talking oh, so about do I. food out for the foxes. Oh yeah, this. Well, was, I was getting annoyed at someone leaving their food because there has been rodent issues in the area, you know. And I was like, who keeps leaving the fucking food out? And it turns out it's this nice woman. Mm. And like, I'm like, I don't want to say, hey, will you, can you fuck off leaving that there? Because I don't no, want do. rats in my house. Write a note on her door in German. Mm. Okay, <laughs> yeah. But leave a note on her door and then she won't know who it's from. And uh, and she'll just she'll get them. Can people stop being crazy in the public space? There's another guy who has two bollards outside his house. Bollards. There, is, there are two cones, traffic cones. And when he pulls in, like there is ample parking, but when he pulls in, he just drives into them. 
and moves them with the car. Oh my god! So that, and so that he then when he leaves, he reverses out of his place and then gets out of his car. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh my god! Can people please keep yeah. their mania Cone behind Cone their Wars. doors? My old street there was Cone Wars as well. It's when there's public parking and you're in a kind of near the city area, which is where yes. where, you, where you are as well. Like they people put the cones out. They go, this is where I. This is my. Even that though means you nothing. Don't, it doesn't. No. You don't. You actually stole those cones. You stole those cones. They're not your legally. Yeah, legally where do you buy those cones? cones. No. Don't yeah. know where you buy crutches and you don't know where you buy cones. <laughs> oh yeah, where do you buy crutches? I don't know where you buy crutches. Same you don't see shop. Them around. Same shop. Where's all the crutch? Where's the crutch shop? Where's all the pigeon babies? And where's the cone shop? You know what I hate about the pigeons is that apparently um, humans domesticated them and left them. Then that's why they're like oh. that. That's why they actually eat trash. Do you know what oh. I was thinking about yesterday? Looking at pigeons, some of them are birds, like like women. Mm. Some of them, and like I never thought about that. You mean the way dogs are all boys, cats are all cats girls? Cats are all girls. Yes. But like some of the pigeons are like a magpie. Like, one can land on your wall as a lad. Another one can land on your wall as a girl. I'm like, I think they're all girls. I, do I, you? Thought, yeah, yeah. I thought pigeons were kind of girls, yeah. Because of their cloacas. <laughs> because of their stunning <laughs> they sound like cloacas. A, they look like kind of like... They all have the same song. How come I saw that? Yeah, yeah, it's boring. <laughs> yeah. It's like chart, chart music. I'm not mm. into it. And I actually think as beautiful as swans are, all boys, um, yeah, you can be a beautiful boy. I'm terrified of swans. No, I know, but you know which one I fancy. Like, but I think that all the swans are—they just look like they look like kind of you know graceful, and you would have they have you know maybe outdated term, but kind of effeminate features. A but swan, they, 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 I, I look at them all like bo- boys. A swan is just a snake in a wedding dress. You um, can, t- can you tell I'm writing a book? That's good. <laughs> is that in your book? <laughs> no, it's not. It's just something I said. No, I robbed that. And uh, it was a comment I did on Facebook, and I got uh, thirty likes. Oh, that's pretty oh good. God, it was a reply to someone and it got 30 lines. pretty fucking good. Are you now fucking scrolling through your Facebook just for material <laughs> for your book? No. That's desperate. If I was a pigeon, this is how I'd sing because I'm a bit different than alt. I'd be like, <laughs> You know, I didn't think, they said it couldn't be done. Can you do a pigeon song? Never Emo-ish? heard a new, I've actually never heard a new noise. That was it. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can't I, eat yeah. we can't eat those pigeons no. and we can't eat seagulls I ate a pigeon before, not like I didn't catch wood it around what? is that what you eat wood pigeon yeah I was actually in we went I went to the the Dorchester uh, hotel in London my dad would come over to visit me every so often when I lived in London and he would just like, stay in the Dorchester and I'd just go and like just get pissed with him and then go back to my shitty raft flat but um, that's what they eat I remember pigeon. and there was one thing where it was beside Hyde Park and like the guy on the menu was like wood pigeon and the guy goes uh, I was like I'll have the pigeon actually no he's like our specials today are pigeon from high the power yeah. <laughs> and we laughed and I was like I don't know I'll get that and then he and then he came in and he was like he handed it to me and he's like here is your pigeon from high the power <laughs> and I was like very good and then he came back and pick it up and he's like how was your pigeon <laughs> From Hyde Park. <laughs> I was like, I, okay. Uh, I okay. loved uh, working in service and having a joke that I had told a thousand times mm. that made people laugh every single time. Mm. I loved it. I, I love having that. Mm. From Hyde from Park. Hyde He's probably like, Park. They, they laugh at this. Mm. <laughs> but you cannot eat seagull and you can't eat just regular pigeon because we can't eat anything that eats meat. What's that? What we mean? can't. We can only eat animals that don't eat meat. Really? Yeah, because they get all bugs and shit and they get all bacteria and That's all. I don't know. I wouldn't be in a hurry to eat notes. pigeon anyway. It's very gamey. I just I like game. I didn't care for it. The I Queen's like Pigeon? I didn't care for it. <laughs> the Queen's Pigeon. You have been caught one. eating the Queen's Pigeon, sir. <laughs> Remember somebody... How'd you know it was me? <laughs> Feathers. <laughs> Feathers. How'd you know? I might be a lonely scythe. What's it called? A sif? Surf. 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 I might be a lonely surf, but I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't seem to eat a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Still popping out of your mouth. No, but it'd be like, for me with that hey, hey, buddy, we have to eat the emo pigeon. Me with that bit. <laughs> <laughs> we're in two bits at once. Yeah, we're doing two. Sorry, sorry we were, we're doing two sets of jokes at the one time. Bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jane, you, uh, this is great. Uh, audio. Let's reset you were in the newspaper. it. I was in the newspaper there the other week. And you know what? How did you swindle just doing a, a walk in? That was a brilliant format. You were doing yeah. a walk in tour. We're doing Malali, a Malali. Idea, Una Malali's idea. She used to like, we'll walk around Dublin and take pictures of you in various places. Genius. It was a big, long interview. And like, I was away when that came out and I didn't have a copy of it because they didn't release it the next day online. Saps. Mm. But it's very, I tell you, I need to work on myself. I was mortified 
I was like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I've said so much stuff. That was great. I feel like I've taken out my bum in front of everyone. Mm. Mm. Which, now generally, I would, spread. I would do. <laughs> <laughs> hey! hey. Dum, dum. No, but it's terribly vulnerabilizing. It is, yeah. We, yeah. Had, like, well, we, we walked around for like yeah, four, four yeah. hours. Like, Whoa. And wow. then, you know, we had a pint and everything. And uh, it's exhausting. So, but it's like you, you end up just talking about things. But I was like, oh my God, I'm really embarrassed. It's easy to talk about stuff on stage and talk about your feelings or whatever if you, if you get to have a show like that. Yeah. But yeah, it's much different when you're like, oh my God. And then you're like, all I kept thinking about is the amount of people going, who's this fucking prick? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, oh. One person who wasn't like that was my mum who read it and she was loving it. Um, but she, my mum is a tour guide. She's a, a, a Tory. A, sorry, she's a she's a Tory. Uh, she no. couldn't be further from a Tory. <laughs> yeah, very much. Uh, but she she's a tour guide, and she uh, was reading it, and she was like, like a Sunday morning, she was reading it, and she was like having her coffee, and she went, Shane's going on tour, and I was like, yeah, he's going on tour. She's like, what? why is he going on tour? And I was like, he's uh, he's a, he's a, he's going on tour, and she went, where is he going to do? Is he so he's, he's gonna be, is he gonna become a full time tour guide? <laughs> oh. And I was like, "What are you talking about?" In her head, tour only means a guided historical tour. So she thought you were just becoming a my tour. comedy tour. There was a just weird, a there was guide. a weird phrasing of it. He's starting his tour. Yeah, and like I walked around with Shane as, and he told me about starting his tour. And yeah. I'm like, "Oh, is he gonna do a fucking walking tour?" It actually did read like it was you were gonna do, start doing a walking. Oh tour. god, so okay, well, let's put that you're... out. No, I'm not running a walking tour in Dublin. There's enough comedians who actually already do that, <laughs> so I'm not doing that. It but... is actually a big way that comedians tend to get work. Yeah, they do. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My mum constantly goes, you'd, "You'd be a great tour guide." Be you great would be a great she said guide. that about you when we said that she went you'd be a great tour guide I would be oh you'd be brilliant I That's... wouldn't be because I'm very like I can do it like there, it would be all the patter from when you're walking to the next point I wouldn't enjoy that I feel like I could stand there in front of you know Christ Church and be like Strongbow <laughs> you know or whatever and then do all that but actually the kind of patter in between see I'm very like you'd need, you'd need more than just the word Strongbow what? yeah <laughs> I don't know who he is. <laughs> Tony, Very no. Tony just walks. Any questions? Walks beside Christchurch. Strongbow. All right, let's move on. And then just <laughs> yeah, gets yeah, yeah. St. Patrick's Cathedral and just, yeah. church. Church. Right. Is his <laughs> name? Walks to Burdocks. Chipper. <laughs> Richard DeClaire, is that his name? Yeah. R Richard DeClaire. Half of Strongbow is in, is it, which one is it in? Christchurch or Patrick Cathedral? Patrick I think Cathedral. it's, I think. Oh, Christchurch. Strongbow. Half of them. Half of them. Yeah. The other's in the Amber Hall. Is it? No, it's that Hitler only has one ball, the other's in the Albert Hall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Did Hitler only have one ball? No. Right. It's all a bunch of waste, waste of time. <laughs> I can't say you mentioned... Um, what? Well, I just feel uncomfortable talking about When we about talk him. about Hitler? Yeah. <laughs> we talk about tight scrotums again like we did last week? <laughs> no. Leave the tight scrotums out of it. That's enough. This mm. is your ick. Me? You got, you got a tight scrotum ick. No. Okay, look, we're not I don't know why you're blaming me on just because you fill up this but people listen to this you know making their kids lunches people listen to this maybe on their way to mass <laughs> 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 don't, they don't need to hear about this kind maybe of thing maybe while they're in mass true do you know what I was I was in mass uh, and uh, I, do why? you know what I realised <laughs> well, funeral funeral right yeah mm. You had to ask. It's you? okay. We're yeah. great with death. Uh, we're so good with death. We're so good with death. And I was just sitting there going, "We're so good with death." We're in, ma we're in mass funeral, and um, and I was like, getting the urge to take my phone out. Oh mm. yeah, but I couldn't. That's the only place I just would never take my phone out, and no one was. And I was like, "That's you couldn't." <laughs> I I you would not at a funeral phone. mass. You couldn't at a funeral mass. Imagine taking your phone out. Just fucking playing Snake. or Well, I mean, that's obviously not what you do on your phone. Just going on Instagram while someone's, you know, it's a funeral. You can't do that. Uh, so that, and I was like, this is kind of a meditative experience. Mm. Um, even though obviously a funeral mass. Uh, I, was, I would like, I was, like to help them. Of going, oh, digital detox. I would like to believe in Christianity, whatever. And I'd like to like put forward ways to like jazz up the mass. I was just going to say, well, how, what would you do to jazz I up the mass? I think like just make it, I fucking think like, Wi-Fi. first of all, a lot of the priests are going to have to be sacked. I think that's the thing. Yes. Make it warmer. Let us know that if you need to go to the, for a pee, you can. Mm. This danger of like, there may or may not be a toilet here. You're basically Every church you go into, can we pee MCs. here? You want, you want comedian MCs. There should be, be an MC. There should be a little, maybe the altar boys can do a warm up. 
All right, guys, we're going to start the hallelujah over in this corner of the room, yeah, and I want to see that hallelujah oh. spread over. Okay. All right, so you you, and you in the front row, uh, yeah, you're just completely bent over. Oh, you, you're just not permanently like that. Where are you from? <laughs> you're local, just like everyone here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anyone here? The road. Anyone here under 80 years old? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a no. Anyone yeah. under 85? Okay. But could jazz up, like, <laughs> I used to like some of the bits where... I hate the way they sing word, like sing talk. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. Boring. And okay, but I like they had they had a good Alleluia at one time they used to have and it was like um Alle, Alleluia and then other people join in Alle, Alleluia and then they go Alleluia and then me and my brothers used to always go da 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 just add on. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. Yeah. Da, 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 I love da, da, da. when the priest goes for it, though. I love when the priest is... You know, if you're not a good singer, thing. shut up, priest. Oh, it's funnier mm. when they're no, not good no, I like, no. I'm sick of hearing people who are good at singing. I want to hear people who are bad at singing. It's much better. It's much more human. It's like when, you know, you know when they say the handmade clothes, you look for the blemishes because that's, you know, someone's hands was on that. That's mm. what I like, you know. And, and hearing the priest going like, May the Lord bless Almighty. Amen. That's good. Though. That's good. I like that. But that, that is good. good but that's you being a good singer. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll try do bad. <laughs> what the fuck yeah. is this? I'll try. I'll try do bad. May the Lord abide your mercy. And at the funerals, can the priests chill out? They're doing this. They don't take control of the funerals and everything. They make you do the eulogy at the beginning, mm. so that as if everyone's going to leave before the big finish. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like get your hands off it. Like mm. let us do our funerals. You little saps. And, They're little yeah. saps up there now, thinking they can do what they like. And like I think no, it's... we don't do that anymore. No, it must be about the Lord they, God. You know they've changed mm. the words as well. They've changed a lot of the words. Have they? Updated you know the, it? You know the creed. That's completely changed. What they creed? jazzed that up. The creed. You know of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Holy Lord and the Apostolic uh, Appalachian Church, the <laughs> yeah. Apostolic Church. You know, the one, they, they, they list basically the things that they believe. They've changed, which was my favorite bit, of all that is seen and unseen. I always thought when I was a kid. All that is seen and unseen. Of all that is seen and unseen. Because I was just like a kid who was obsessed with Lord of the Rings and, you know, fantasy. And I just thought the phrase, of all that is seen and unseen, dear Frodo. Yeah, yeah, It just yes. kind of had that vibe to it. Do you know what they've changed it to? Of all that is visible and invisible. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh. Is that not so boring? You know what I love? I love the line from Here I Am, Lord. You know, I the Lord of sea and sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What about land? That's where we live. <laughs> it's the Lord of sea I and the sky. Lord of I've sea heard my people sky. cry. I can fly and I can swim. But I, but I cannot walk on your land. <laughs> it's Come actually... into the sea. <laughs> So I can help you again. It's actually a very come up to the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> a very cheery uh, air for for the words like it was like, all who dwell in dark and sin, sin. my hand shall save. My hand shall it's save. Like, Dwell in dark and sin. Mm. Would they ever leave us alone? Let's just, <laughs> let's just actually unpack a little bit. Even when I was a kid, I remember they were like, you know, and um, leave us alone. I'm not unworthy. Uh, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you. We're not worthy to receive you. Only say that. Oh my gosh, just, just I'm having a problem. Lord, I am not worthy, worthy to, to receive, receive you, you, but only say, say the, the word, word and, and I, I shall be healed. healed. I remember being a kid and I was like, yes, I am. Yes, mm. I am. Yes, I am. You're worthy to receive the Lord. Yeah, come in my mouth, Lord. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wow. I'm not afraid. Doodle I'm doodle not doodle afraid. Doodle. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. <laughs> do me. No, that's, uh, that's, that's blasphemous. I'm actually well, joy scared. To You're allowed to do blasphemy Famously, now. joy to the world, the Lord is come. So, Joy to the world, the Lord <laughs> is come. No, Change I'm, that. I don't want to go to hell because you guys. Just in case. It's imagine. Real. Are you yeah, but imagine. The, are you a one foot in just in case, sir? Oh Absolutely. My you are. I am. If you have babies, are you? will you baptize them? Absolutely. Well, you, just in case. No, it's not. It's actually not that. It's just that like, I'm hyper aware that I yeah, am. Yeah, Lord, the Lord loves that, by the way. This I'm, whole just in case. <laughs> I kind of believe. No. Mr. Case. No, I'm, I, call I you just Justin? realized like, I'm a line of a, like, a, you know, <laughs> Thanks, 2,000 Tony. years of Catholicism. 2,000 years of consistent Catholicism in my family. Well, about 600 or 700 years of Catholicism, no, because that's when they had to schism away. Okay, but like of mm. Christianity, yeah. of, of following the, those rites and passages. And I'm, I'm the one who has to break that chain. I, too much pressure. All you also broke ancestors. the chain by doing a podcast. Do you All know what I mean? Like you broke the chain by doing things that they didn't ever do. No, but this, you broke this the chain is a, by this is a, driving a van. Like yeah. you're probably the only, the only my van. My granddad drove a van. Speaking of the chain, I think God might say, "If you don't love me now, you will never love me again." <laughs> <laughs> you will still 
Never break the chain. Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac. No, I, I, I <laughs> nice. do. I, I, I feel <laughs> pressure to do uh, as my ancestors have done for fucking millennia. Is it not? Do you guys not feel a bit of a pressure? No. No, not at all. Think of all the other things they did that were stupid. I don't really like. I, in, I don't like any of the tradition. I can't believe you think my granddad didn't drive a van. <laughs> what do you guys think of my haircut? It's very nice. Cute, but it's not enough. It's not enough. It needs an earring. No. Well, well you do need an earring. earring. Yeah. yeah. Tony. Where is your earring? My and bird Terry got gave you, you an a earring. nice earring. Would you trade it for another Audi wallet? You no. twat. <laughs> <laughs> He's a house earring, full of Audi wallets. The earring, the earring broke. <laughs> you can't move for it the broke. Audi wallets. I have the rest of it, but the... the, the I was thinking I was being too violent with you it. You were being too violent. It's not flimsy. No, uh, it's not. It was not flimsy. It was just... I think I was being too violent trying to get it and I get it in. I was being too... Was it, did Anna attach it to a chain again and pull you around the room? <laughs> <laughs> like a little mutt that you are? Yeah. I'm like actually getting so pig. horny thinking about this. <laughs> no, I don't. I need an earring. <laughs> and you're having to go me talking about scrotums. Pigs. Um, Jeez, your wife did message spilled, me offline self. actually about oh, this how because you Tony gave us... We're kind of having an affair. Tony gave us... I famously know Cherry a lot longer than you, Tony. You do. Not saying I know her better, but I do know no. her longer. But um, she messaged me and said, Tony, you gave us each one earring. And she was like, I told Tony that you wear two and Killian wears one, but he wanted you both at the same present. And I said, he is so stubborn. And she said, from his real wife to his work wife, yes, he is indeed so stubborn. <laughs> oh, wow. She <laughs> wants to replace them. And I said, don't be, don't be silly. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. You what am I, your work In son? <laughs> <laughs> I'm your work boy. You're my, my work, work nephew. <laughs> You better work, boy. No, but they're, they're my it incredible. It just, I, I was a bit too violent with it. I'm going to see if I can get it fixed. Um, but I, I need to get the earring and I'm feeling Did you really go into one of those up. Turkish barbers and they just went... No, I, I, no. I did go to a earring. Turkish barber to get my hair cut, by the way. Did you? I did. The, the, the barber, I went in. It was Sunday. The only barber opened on a Sunday. And it was just a random one. Wow. I have a lot of haircut anxiety because I'm a, a long-haired man without long hair at the minute. But mm. I am a long-haired man. Not right. anymore. I identify as a long-haired man. Well, not anymore. I identify as a long-haired man. No, no, no. <laughs> You're a turncoat, is what you You let yeah. us down. I still time. do. You know, long-haired men, like, kind of nod to each other. Um, I do that still, but I don't have the long hair to back it up, so they think I'm just nodding at them. Do long-haired men nod to each Sometimes, other? Yeah, you a get little bit, yeah. Kind of like a little bit of a... Well, I, well, I mean, for other people, they probably see it as some sort of, like, fraternity. For yeah. me, I'm threatened by every single <laughs> fucking one of them. And I'm also a bit ashamed as well. Like, I feel really weird when I look up long men hairstyles. I'm like, oh. Long men. L long men. Long men. <laughs> long men. There was one time during like the, the COVID. the Anunnaki a aliens. Mr. 13 Tickles. 13 foot tall. Mr. Tickles. <laughs> Just a top hat. <laughs> Just a top hat. He was my favorite Mr. Man because he could get a biscuit all the way down when he was from bed. And now we have Deliveroo. Everything's changed. <laughs> Mr. Tickles like, dust. I can, mm. I can get, well, I got Deliveroo. Yeah. Um, but he used to tickle people. And I was reading that to my son. He was, he was tickling people. He would tickle people around the corner. And my son, he was laughing. I'm like, now, just like, you know, that's bad. Like, because he should have, he should be like, can I tickle you? You know, can I tickle you? You should ask consent. There's a hairdresser on, online at the minute who asks, can I touch you before uh, yeah, so they that. touch the people's hair? And people are getting very annoyed about it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, you know, I don't know. I mean, is it that big? Oh, it's, people getting annoyed about it. Just come on. Like, that's a hairdresser who does that. People go that because they want that experience. But anyway, the hairdresser I asked, uh, I did, I went to, I, uh, did not ask me if he could touch me beforehand. But he did. And it was great. And it was just like a regular hairdresser. <laughs> Put his hand right down your pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, nice he was push. great. But he was, he, was a tur he was a Turk. And he... Um, he was like, can was, you say that? Can you can say, even say that? Can you say that? <laughs> say that he's, he was Turkish. He was Turkish. No, you probably can't. I don't say like Turk. putting ish on the end of it because it sounds like they're not fully. <laughs> There's a good news he blooper. Was Turkish. Ish. Irish. There's a good news mm. blooper from years ago, and the guy is on BBC. They're doing like Vox Pops and so say, Excuse me, sir, are you Peckish? And he goes, No, I am Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, did he? Did you pay him a revolute? No, no, he said he was nice. He he uh, he only charged me for like a beard trim, even though he did my hair. But he was great. I was asking him about like Turkish barbers. I was like, what's the story with Turkish barbers? Like, what's that whole thing? Like, and he was telling me all about it. He was like, oh, like in Turkey, uh, barber is not just. Uh, Please do the accent. It's not just uh, yeah. Yeah. barber. It's, it's more. He's a uh, hairdresser. My hairdresser, uh, he did, he did me circumcise. He circumcised me. Oh my god! And I was like, "What?" He was like, "He do my, uh, you know, my he do my circumcise." And I was what? like, "He what?" And he was giving me the, he was doing the, he was kind of doing a pinch and snip, snip motion. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, he did, yeah." And he said that that is the 
the red and the white of a barber is to do with kind of like blood or something. Blood and bandages. Mm. Blood and blood bandages. bandages. Like yeah. cork. And, and not only do uh, uh, hairdressers in Turkey, they're not just, they're kind of more, um, not like fully doctors, but they they give medical advice. So they look at your skin and they're kind of like, oh, your skin looks a little bit whatever. And when mm. he was saying that, his English, he was he, he had great English conversation, but he had some bits where when he said things, he kind of had to ask. And he was doing an example. What I didn't realize was he was doing an example of what a Turkish barber would do. But he, I didn't get that from the way he was describing it to me. So he's like, you know, uh, like, look at your skin, your skin. There's something very wrong here. And I was like, what? And he was like, your skin, there's something very wrong. And I was like, oh, uh, what? He's like, you have to go to the doctor. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> he's like, something like that. And I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> but he was like pointing at my cheek somewhere here. And was like, something wrong with your skin. And I was like, oh. Uh. Mm. But it was, he was doing an example. Um, but he was great. He was re- uh, like a Turkey, the, the barbers, and they're so good. I, I get great haircut, right? Mm-hmm. Good haircut. Yeah, lovely. Brilliant. Really nice. And then he said, I could. Something missing, though. I could go back to him, and he said, um, <laughs> it's his hearing. eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Hot eyebrow shave. Yeah. <laughs> He, they, he waxed my eyebrows I keep them waxed mm-hmm. they um, also do as well as all those the medical things they also do lovely interior design as well uh, in many many areas the Turks? no just made that up <laughs> just as if the barber would also do interior design I quite like the idea of well, that he, uh, he said I would definitely go back to him he's a brilliant brilliant hairdresser and he said uh, he didn't work there I was like oh where are you working he's like in Lafarnum La and I was like oh cool and he, wh- wh- what's the name of the shop and he's like in the Chinese you go in the Chinese at the back of the Chinese You'll find me. Okay, that's great. He's at his barber's So shop. he's in, somewhere in the back, back of the Chinese in Ratfarnham. Sounds amazing. And he's brilliant. He's a really, really good hairdresser. Uh, so I'll be going back. I went back to my to my Turk. You don't have a Turk? <laughs> no, I have a dub. And you know, he did something. There was no one in the shop this time. So he really took his time this time. Hussein. And um, he was doing the shave. And then he took out the, the razor and leaves it in like it's a lovely little ornate kind of bowl. You know, mm-hmm. has water. And then he... Um, he Starts going, putting a lighter on it, right? And then he sprays it with uh, with aftershave and then lights it. And it was like this massive, like, <laughs> <laughs> and he did that like 16 times because he knew that I, I was like, I kept saying like, oh, wow. <laughs> and he would do it again. And I'm like, wow. And I'm like, this is fucking amazing. Not only do I have someone l- rubbing me so much and giving me so much attention, which I love, yep. but it's also a bit of fucking David Blaine shit in here as well. Yeah. Fucking Dynamo in yeah. here. It, like, oh, 30 euro well spent. <laughs> Oh, Very expensive. Yeah, great. Yeah. Anyway, you guys love the haircut? Yeah, you look good. Some, just something missing. It's an earring. I know it's missing. Mm, I need nah, to get one. Meow. I, and eyebrows. Pff, what can I do about that? Stop it now about that. Yeah. I, 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 I dyed my eyebrows. I didn't dye. I got them painted in when on. I did that Paul Mescal sketch. And Paul I Mescal? Think, I think I looked better. Paul Mescal. More uh, Paul, and, uh, Paul Mescal? And uh, <laughs> I think I looked better. And it was really hard for me because I'm like, I, I don't have eyebrows. And you guys are bringing it up, and I'm self-conscious. I don't really have that much hair, so it's grand. I was surprised you kept the mustache for a... For what? Paul Mescal. Well, uh, he has a mustache. Does he? Yeah, and he also, I think, copied me, because I had that mustache before him. Yeah. You know, everyone was raving, (laughs) him and Andrew Scott are in that film, and everyone was raving about their little press interviews. I thought that was real cringe. Really? I I I was like, cringe more. What? We cringe more ago about the whole thing. I thought they were super cute. I thought they were cute and they're great. Funny. And they're... But like, I mean, it was just, it just seemed like they were just having a chat like anyone would have a chat. Deirdre Kane messaged me and said that she sent the Paul Mescal sketch that I did when I sang two to Andrew Scott. Right. And she said, I bet he'll send it on to Paul Mescal now. So I'm terrified. I'm terrified he's seen it now. And How do we get Paul Mescal on this podcast? He was on I'm Grandmam or other yeah, enemy podcast. He was on I'm, I'm Grandmam. Yeah, they got well before he was like Oscar nominee when he was just Connell for normal people. Um, they had him on, yeah. We can get Andrew Scott look like Peter McGann on the podcast. <laughs> uh, you know who does a very good Andrew Scott? Sean Burke does a really good. He does Andrew. A very good Andrew Scott. Look it up. It's like quite. It's st- incredible. It's good. quite startling, actually. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like very Moriarty Sherlock Andrew Scott. Can I? Yes. Can I read out a, uh, an email that we got? Yeah. Uh, that is kind of related to this from a celebrity. Um, yes. Or a- because right. I think anyone else who's Kalul celebrities, um, email us in. Okay, so hello, have been listening to the pod. So, this is sorry, can I say this is from Brenna? Um, hey, Brenna, Brenna from uh, Wisconsin. 
Oh. Hello. I've been listening to the pot to the podcast. I've been listening to your podcast. <laughs> that's not Wisconsin. That's Wisconsin, Wisconsin, would be, Wisconsin. I'll do whatever Wisconsin. accent I like. Okay. Well. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> no American. <laughs> okay. Have been listening to the pot P O T uh, since I saw the trailer Bim. on Killian's no, hang TikTok. Hang on, Delise. You got it wrong. <laughs> you got it wrong. Brilliant. Like, Oh, sorry, like I don't know what to <laughs> better look next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got three words in. No, sorry. Um, I've been no. listening to the pot since I saw the trailer on Killian's TikTok the day it launched. I listened to pot never bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say you guys have gotten too fat because it's from Killian's TikTok. Sorry. I've watched all the episodes twice now. This is the what? first podcast I've ever actually liked and not had to skip through. And today I wanted more content <laughs> so much that. It's now also the first time I've subscribed to oh, it. Oh, oh thank, you. thank you. So there was much. Maybe being a jerk. If you want Sorry. to subscribe, head to Head Stuff Plus, and you can subscribe. Get bonus content once a week. Wow, thank you so much, gee, Brian. I'm thanking you kindly for your support in <laughs> this podcast. Like that. Like I, don't, that. I don't know. She which just one sent another email saying, and it's also the first podcast I've stopped subscribing to after Shane's accent. Wow, was oh, shit. Oh, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm begging your forgiveness, Miss Brian. I don't mean to cause no offense. I just playing is all. <laughs> I just a poor little boy from the bayou or something. I ain't a, my daddy done be gone. I'm going to cut in before that gets problematic. Yeah, I have yeah. a question for y'all. Okay, great. As the official young hot guys of Ireland, mm-hmm. how do you feel about the rise of international appreciation for hot, famous Irish men? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is there national pride about people like Niall Horan, Hosier, Barry Keown, Paul Meskel, Killian Murphy, and Killian Sunderman? No, she didn't say Killian Sunderman. Okay. Hitting the galas and the red carpets and unquestionably slaying. Or does it get annoying that people are always fawning over the accent just noticing uh, that Irish people are great? I'm from Wisconsin for context and a friend of mine from Dublin seemed very exasperated with me a couple of years ago when I told him that I was enamored with Killian and Niall and Barry. He said something along the lines of dark hair, blue eyes and an Irish accent. You've just described half the men over here. I did sit through the entire Sounds live like action Peter jealous. Rabbit just to see Donald Gleeson. I love him more than I hate James Corden, but only Barry. Barely. Barely. <laughs> only Barry. Only Pot. Some, you know, she's saying that we're beautiful. She, uh, she's saying that, uh, you know, this she hates great. an English person. This is good topic to bring very up, Brenna. Good, good um, topic. Okay, so adore the pod. Also, and very excited about being able to listen to bonus stuff now. Thanks for being my fav white boys of the month every month. Ah. Also, when, if any of you start doing shows in the US, please come to Chicago or Milwaukee first. Being having serious FOMO when you promote shows. Cheers, Brenda. P.S. Is there anyone you guys would really like to have on as a guest? Would love to see Garen Noon or Shane Todd or Vittorio Angeloni or Dave Nihill or even the cute TikTok woodworking guy from Cork. Oh, oh, I love him. Oh, yes. I like that. Yeah. I like him. Okay. Whatever about those he's comedians. Jumped, he's jumped to the top of the list. Forget about Vittorio and Shane Todd. Can you fix this them. table? Oh, Look at that. Noon. Um... But, uh, so the question is, do we feel offended feel about, about being, I suppose, uh, uh, what is it when when, when uh, people fa- fa- fantasize over a, a stereotype of fetishize? Like, fetishize. What, yeah, what, we are being kind of fetishized. I yeah. don't think we are. Like, I, I think it's, I mean, that's why I think that, that I remember that SNL sketch yes. where it was like Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson and they were like, how to tie to tie? It was just like, oh, come on. Like, yeah. are we not? Are we not like fucking decades past that? We've moved on from oh you come mean, on mean, to come on our tits. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, that's yeah. Where are we, are we yeah. not decade past that? It's like, decades. It's literally, this. are we not a decade? A past single that? decade past that? <laughs> no. Yeah, I think it's good. I think I have no. It, I think it's I the think hottest it's, Irish, uh, the hottest that Irish boys have ever been. Between Barry Kill, but I thought Barry Kill was super fucking hot in Saltburn. Yeah, yeah, so did I. But I think as well, like. There's hot like like Paul Meskel, hot handsome, super hot. Um, and what's this? What's the other fella? Andrew Scott, Andrew hot Scott, and handsome, hot right? And handsome. Mm-hmm. Niall Horan's just famous. He's no, an attractive guy. He's, he's not attractive. Hot, he's not he's attractive, though, is he? And he's also just got that thing about him. He's got that star quality. He's he's just got that, you know, charm. That charm. Well, when he auditioned for the X Factor, Cheryl did say. You've got a lot of charm for a 16-year-old. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah, but you know what she also said? No. Yeah, that's true. Katy Perry said yes See, to him. Is, there there are levels of horniness, okay? So, like, we've all kind of seen the others do, you know, do hotter and hornier things. But there's probably someone who's like, I don't really, you know, there's probably girls or boys who are like, I wouldn't mind Niall Horn giving me a big hug and smell in my hair. Mm. And maybe give me a little kiss in the earlobe. Yeah. And he could do that within that, you know, he's within that remit. He's like kind of on the more tender scale, yes. you know, and then he'll sing a song about you with his, wearing a vest, but not fully with his shirt off. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And the other boys might, you know, try and like, you know, 
uh, hopping a bath after you've been in it. Do you know what I mean? Like so, yeah. the, like so, there's, there's, think, there's different levels of the I horniness. Some, I think that obviously we are in an unprecedented era of of Irish. You know, hot guys. Have you hot guys? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And obviously, we are we right are the there authority next on it. Right yeah. next authority on it, Jim. Um, I would still put, you know, uh, mid-2000s, Colin Farrell. Yep. He would beat all of them put together. I think Which there was the level in of, a sex competition. In a, in a sexy competition, he would win. In Breakfast, a host, lunch, sexy and dinner. dinner. Come on, <laughs> come on, our Colin Farrell was probably one of the sexiest people Hollywood's ever had to deal with, ever. Yes. I think it's age though. Like I think I mean obviously, but like he's you still, look, no, he's still. You look hot. back at it. I mean, it, well, the fact that he's kind of like, he's like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then he's all like, well, you know, uh, Martin, he's just a brilliant playwright. He's a brilliant mind, and I'm like, this is <laughs> yeah, a different yeah, voice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a different fucking voice on the guy. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, I told him, um, you know, Barry, you just you know, um, keep this keep, text is just fascinating. You know, yeah, <laughs> keep your nose clean and, there, uh, there, and there's uh, a good uh, act, two actors talking, and it's Colin Farrell and it's Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant famously like completely disrespects the craft of, of acting, which like, I love. I it's love. great. I'm there for it. He's like, do you not know think we're just like pretending to be people, yeah. and it's not really a big deal, and like people should get over it. I hated being I, an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> yeah, but there's it been a, a big, I think the actors, this actors on actors and all this stuff, they're taking themselves so seriously now. Mm. They've gone so, it's like, yeah, but you're just movie star people. Like, mm. it's not even real. It's not yeah. actually, actually, like, oh, you win the Oscar because you were the best at having fake teeth like Freddie Mercury. What a load of shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, grow up. You're also like, just pretending to be someone. That's just, like, kids boring. do that. Boring. Yeah. yeah. It's like, mm. yeah, when I, you know, I was pretending to be this guy. It's like, you can't take you seriously. And there was one the other day that somebody was giving Carrie Mulligan praise for she was receiving praise from Fassbender in one of these sit down let's get up each other's whole Mm -hmm. interviews where they go Mm. and he kept saying how good she was and she didn't say oh stop she just kept saying thank you and it was like yes accept the praise I was like okay what a if your life if you're so (laughs) devoted to something so boring (laughs) as the topic of when you're receiving praise and you must not she was just like yes thank you yes yes or whatever she just was like yeah yeah or she didn't say thanks whatever Mm. it was and I was like Get a fucking mm, life. I, These people are like, yeah. here's $12 million <laughs> and you just read the lines and you work for a couple of hours out of the day. I'm shut very, up, I'm shut very, up, shut up. I, I, when, I, when I get praised, I'm actually like annoying. If someone was like, great question, I'm like, thank you. Like, <laughs> like I, I say thanks for I would two, love even when it's like uh, some dismissive praise. If we, like, did, we, if we did that kind of inside the actor's studio where we, where we sat or that, you know, head to head, sit across and talk. Yeah. Really, now, Tony, I just really want to say, like, that bit you did on when you had that swollen ball. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, can you just talk about how you got there and how, you know, like, well, how big was the ball and how, how did you do Well, that? it was huge. The thing is, you know, it's just, I feel like <laughs> all it can be is my truth. Mm. And at that time, my truth was I had a scrotum that looked like I had four fucking nuts in there. Yeah. Mm. And, um, you know, I was in hospital for four Did days, you feel like you were speaking for all the people? I was who... speaking for all people, all men. <laughs> Women as well, actually, which is a weird one. <laughs> which is weird I'm saying yeah. you're actually speaking for me as well and I'll be the annoying guy from the Hollywood Reporter mm-hmm. who interrupts and <laughs> say well Tony we had that from you but Killian your piece on the podcast about mm. your barbarous circumcision mm. really broke some ground and how was that for you how did you find that <laughs> well circumcision obviously that's the big thing that you know I, I spent um, years researching the circumcision and you know I'm, I sat in on a lot of Circumcisions and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I still have them. I did a few. They let me do a few. I have some of the foreskins. <laughs> if you dry them up, they'd make really good earrings. The <laughs> <laughs> thing is, Shay, like you would love to be sitting there across from some Hollywood actor and saying, "Blowing smoke up your arse," would you not? No, no, no way. I would not contribute to the ego of that. So the, if you were the, asked, like they, it is fluke and it is looks, right? Of course so it, it is. Like I just think this thing of they think that they're the chosen ones. It's either they already come from money and they have all that. They have they're really good looking or they have real interesting looking. Like that's do you know what it's it just, is. There's actors. There's hundreds and thousands of actors. People who can do just as well as those people. But you need to be five foot eight and have a big head. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what looks good on screen. And yeah. that's 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 just and a that big is, dick. Apparently, this is what we're learning from the. I'm telling you, I'm fucking ho- quite a hog on the ch- on the chap. Somebody was doing. Do you know what people love doing? Someone said Barry Kogan. Kogan, Kogan. I say Kogan, even though I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah has a big too. dick, and then someone's like, "Stop that big." 
It was your podcast partner. Yes. And I was like, will you shut up? Straight boys are so boring. No, I'm that think, big. Uh, so <laughs> mine's huge. Some of the Hollywood penises, though. It's oh, not, compared to Fastbender's. It's no Fastbender. Fastbender was in the process of wanking his. Can we all like call a spade a spade? Do you know what I mean? When we saw his hog in um, in Hunger. <laughs> <Didn't he>? <laughs> <laughs> no. <I'm>, <laughs> We didn't really get a good enough look at mescals, but it seemed to be pretty hefty from my memory. What did mm. you, when did we see it? In Normal People. We got to see? Yeah. No. Did you watch Normal People? Did, normal People. Didn't even do the pandemic? I did do, I did do the pandemic. I, excuse me. I performed as Paul Mescal. You know, I could be in this. I could be in this. In the way, I, I love seeing side boob. Um, sure. Like a side mm. boob's nice, mm. you know, or under boob is nice. Mm. What kind of dick do you like seeing? Do you like seeing straight dick? Like, just like, there's a person standing there. Like, there was a lot of kind of, like, straddling side dick well, I, in, yeah. in like, Saltburn. I think just what any kind type of, of representation, dick? because we're not getting represented out there, you know? And so any I know, type I'm asking penis, what, the hot, what the hot dick any is. Any type of penis in the media is good, because I feel like we're getting in there and we're, we're being seen there. And I know some people are probably like, oh, you know, oh, the, the token penis is in the show. But mm. I think any representation mm. is good representation. So be it your side dick, be it your swinging Mickey... Being, a, you know, someone dancing to murders, the dance floor in yeah. the Victorian mansion, that's representation. That's what representation looks like. I, I like seeing his important. foreskin. I like seeing, you know, a fellow uncut gem <laughs> <laughs> like myself, mm, mm, you know, mm, mm. Uh, just dancing and around the big. Emerald just has so much credit for that, for really bringing the foreskin into. Uh, to the forefront. To, to the full front. To the full front. Um, we see so many exposed uh, f- uh, uh, glands mm. of the penises and bellends that it is time to see one that is more covered. If you draw a picture of one, it's, it's one without the hood. When we draw, in our part of the world, when we draw, we, draw a cock. we draw a cock and balls, you draw a circumcised cock. And I think that points to the kind of... Uh, it was know, very the, important the, for Emil to, the to have the, nib, the long nib at the end I of the foreskin. I dream of the day that children draw... Penises with big hoods, like big it's hoods, a like a little dolphin's head, like, like a an little... anteater. Right? Yeah, mm. Mm. like a dolphin's mouth. Wow, it's disgusting. Is, this is anyway to get yeah, back gross. to this. Gross. To come back disgusting. to come back around, I think it is good to be in the golden age of uh, hot Irish guys going around doing things. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I think uh, I like, welcome it. Yeah, I, I, welcome, I welcome it. it. Yeah, and, and it's I, would I debate to, whether I would love to be in one of those kind of inside the actor blown smoke up each other's holes kind of things. No, but I like talking. I, talk I like, like I like ton weight as soon as I think I get the call. To do yeah, that, but I way. like talking about comedy with other comedians, and I always think it's so funny. Like comedians talk to each other and so take it so seriously, and we're talking, or just before you go on, you're nervous, you're jittery, and you're like. Whew. And then you go out, and then the first thing you do is do a joke about having a shit or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it's silly, so but I do think it's a, it, it, you have to take it seriously in order for the silly thing to be funny. Yeah. So it, that's that's how that works or whatever. Mm. So, but I do think it's funny. But I like talking about that with other comedians. But I don't want to talk about it on for the public consumption. No. And also, I think we're all in the kind of like look. If if people come to the gig and have a good time, like that's great. That's a but that's that's Plan B. Plan yeah. A is me. Look at me. I, I love me. <laughs> like the like uh, that's the thing that annoys me about actors is all like they act like it's the craft, but like you love this attention and oh, you yeah. want everyone to fucking adore you. Yeah. Do you know what they love? Uh, I was you know I suppose the Irish background and you know Irish people are great storytellers. And me, I always love telling stories. I always love storytelling and <laughs> I wanted to share those stories. You didn't. You wanted attention. Best boy in the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best boy in Ronga Shea. That's 100%. who you wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Scott, would you go away? Yeah, storytelling, whatever. Out in Black Rock, you wanted to be Can the star. Can it not be both? Can it not be both? Yes, but be honest. Oh, yeah. This, I'm not saying, there's no, there's actually no shame in wanting a bit of attention. But be honest, this that thing of you want to tell stories, comedians. go away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course, yeah, of, course. of course. Look at me, everyone look at me. But also I feel like as much as I'm doing everyone look at me, I'm also working very hard to make sure that everyone has a good time. Yeah. Mm. So I feel like that's okay to have both. But I don't, I feel like I'm going to attack Andrew Scott. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's start a beef. I love Andrew Scott. I like him. I think he's amazing. Hey, 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 I really hey, love him. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I like Andrew Scott too. Okay, good. I like Just being kidding. part of this generation of Irish, because I think Irish men get trashed for how we look quite a lot. We, we People consistently say we are the ugliest and now we, like, we are statistically the hottest people in Hollywood. We mm. Half of the best actor nominees were Irish. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they're hot, but... People fancy us right now. They're all pretty hot. Mm. And 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 we there was that dating app in Los Angeles or whatever, and it was it was like the people in the dating app um, decided who could come in, and it was basically based on attraction. 
And so it was a very kind of like physical attraction thing. And Irish men ranked right at the bottom, right at the very bottom of wow. every single nationality, which is, you know, there we go. We're well, and boys, at least we're at the top or bottom of one list. But now look at us. Mm. Huh? Now mm. look at the state of us. We're just as ugly, but... You fancy us now. I think it probably has to do with that we're we're hurtling towards the end of humanity mm -hmm. as, as a concept. Like yes. the, the idea of caring for each other in any humane way that people are like, it's the end of the road. Like get a bit of dirt before we go out. Like I think that's it. Yes. Yeah. Irish people are that. I think that's the Irish, true. I do, do you not think so? <laughs> <laughs> when you say we're hurtling to the end of compassion with our fellow man. That's correct as a fact. No, it's not. No, Tony, it's have not. Have you read the news? I know, and look, and I'm also seeing everyone who I know who's in my community absolutely heartbreak, heartbroken by everything yes, that they see. Yes. Like we know what we're able to control, and like you know, I, and, and what for we're able to control is our things. I care. About I things. care about things. Everyone cares about things. Don't what because fucking crusty old Biden's making fucking really bad policies, and so there's some fucking celebrities like not choosing the right side or whatever. Like I mean, that's like you, you have too much information. Tr tr have a better responsibility with your phone and look at better shit. Everything me. is good. Yeah. You're, you're shouting at me. Yeah. So uh, you're the problem, I think, is what he's saying. Don't, don't focus you, on, don't can't focus you on see the that the West is the enemy? That's where you live. We live in at the top of the white supremacy. Haven't you realized that? We're the bad guys. What did no, you do? We, no, we're the bad guys. We, the whole I didn't time. do anything. I'm just learning it myself. No, no, I know. I, know I, and I have compassion for no, everyone Tony, else. And if right, I can, we, and if I can, I'm not with no one saying there's an absence of compassion. Check in your that, privilege. But I just think like th this is like <laughs> oh do. the reality check is like oh we're the bad guys the whole time. We've been the bad guys the whole time. I I, I abhor this narrative that we are uh, hurtling towards the end or it's apocalyptic. There is definitely some things that need to be improved upon. But democracy's I think, over. No, because I love that. Integrity's but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, climate change. Well, well, that is very, you know, that's the thing. And yeah. there's no, and that is catastrophic. Over 1.5, we're fucked. So there is a... Well, stop putting it on everyone. Like, stop putting all this responsibility. Like, like no one asked for fucking Trump and no one asked for Biden. And like, and, and no one asked to for, for countries to be fucking pumping out greenhouse gases. Like, no one asked for any of this. No one asked to have like a, a face uh, recognizing thing. The thumb thing was fine on the phone. Mm. And then all of a sudden we spent COVID mm. having to take our fucking masks off. No one asked for any of this. Mm. But what we know is just like, we know our community. We know our road. We know the people that are fucking around us. We try and be a good person. You try and make conscious things. You try and recycle. So fuck all this guilt and piling on top of everyone. Go to where the fucking money is and change it there. Stop putting all this responsibility on fellow man humanity is great there is more compassion now than I think there's ever been there is more there's better health than there's ever been I'm sorry there's war I didn't do any of it and I give a shit about it but mm. we're not hurtling towards the fucking end of it yeah mm. and I think you know at such a tumultuous time <laughs> like this good, though. that was like the Barbie speech and we need to put some music underneath that do you know how unimpactful I found Barbie that I don't actually know what they're talking about when they're talking about the Barbie speech and I watched the film Sorry, is that is that is that not? Did you do the bit? <laughs> what? I need. I think is it okay to move to on so quickly from that. Tony's speech there. No, it's uh, a Barbie speech. Is, is, is the, 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 I feel uncomfortable without guilt. That's how ingrained the guilt is in me. So I think I accept the guilt. I bring it. I I snuggle up in the guilt in a nice kind of cloak, and I'm like, okay, this is what I am comfortable in. So that's why I. Probably put the guilt on you as well. I I, I, I accept the guilt, but I what I what I don't like is this passive it up. passive guilt. The guilt, you know this, and I'm not calling you passive or whatever like that. But I'm think people who just say the word the world is shit, and I'm like, so fucking do something. Like I mean, like do something or speak to the right person. Like it's. We need to stop. I think it's as bad as like the Tories fucking making it out that it's immigrants or poor people that are drains on the system, and you're kind of poking fingers at a bunch of Spider Mans, three Spider Men, like mm. poking fingers at each other. Like we're all fine. We're good people. Yeah, we're morally good. We do good things for other people. We got we have compassion. Hillary, Hillary just got back. Hillary, our producer, just got back. In the room, she'd been away. She'd been away, and she came back. I think when she left, we were talking about. Uh, someone injecting something into Shane's bum and we were yes. giggling and being immature about it. Now we're talking about the the crisis of humanity or whether we're hurtling at, or at guilt in society and stuff like that. But we are, as I said, comedians not being funny anymore. We are it's nailing true. it this year. But like if you, you can't say capitalism, you know, like there's a name, there's a list of names, there's a list of 50 names. They're the bit like they're the billionaires or they're like, you know, like it's yeah, not, it's is, not it's humanity. Actually, it's, it's actually more capitalism. comic book. There is evil overlords. Anyway, I think that uh, is a good note to end on. I also think I might have to catch my flight. Now. Okay, so, right. okay, great. 
Happy, so, happy, have a great week, everyone, and enjoy your weekend. And we'll talk to you on this podcast next week. Put me down like this. I love you. Yeah, I love you I so, love much. You so much. We love each other, and we love our fellow man. We do. Um, yeah, mostly. There, the track. The very track. Hot, loud, and a little bit sad. He was the best guy around. Oh my! Oh my! Is it hot in here or what? You're an attractive guy. It's the fabulous Tony Cantwell. I'm talking about Shane Daniel Burnett. <laughs> 